the Jack Benny program. American. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. LSMFT. 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 Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Today, tomorrow, and always. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, independent tobacco experts present at the auctions can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy the finer, the lighter, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. And this fine Lucky Strike tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Two weeks ago, Steve Bradley, Jack Benny's press agent, forced Jack into having a contest. You listeners were asked to write in letters completing this simple sentence, I can't stand Jack Benny because... And is it catching on? Ah, yes, there's excitement in the old town tonight. (laughs) Everybody's celebrating. In fact, right now there's a parade coming down Sunset Boulevard. Look, they're turning down the street where Jack Benny lives. shovel in that pile of letters. We lost Mary. <laughs> we didn't lose Mary. She's got a bad cold and couldn't come over today. Oh, that's a shame, Jackson. Did you send her any fruit? No. She still has the fruit I sent her last year when she was sick. <laughs> but that was a year ago. Don't that wax fade? <laughs> no, but during the hot weather, it melts a little, you know. In fact, the banana curled up and looks like a donut with yellow jaundice. <laughs> Now, let's see. Hey, Jackson, why don't you send her some real fruit? The wax stuff don't fool anybody. It doesn't, eh? The apple's got two worms in it. They don't know the difference. (laughs) So why should I work? I'm coming! I'm coming! Gee, how can I... 
How am I going to get to the door with all those letters? Maybe I better put on my snowshoes. It's a good thing I didn't leave them in Yosemite. Oh, boss, boss! What is it, Rochester? On the way back from the door, ski through the kitchen and bring me a glass of water. <laughs> okay. I'm coming. Gosh, these letters are so deep. It's a good thing I got my snowshoes up. Out of the night, which was 30 below, there stumbled a miner fresh from the snow. Dog dirty and loaded for bear. That's me. Rochester, stop. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh. Oh, are you the mailman? Well, what do you think I am with this pack on my back? An early Santa Claus? <laughs> a guy that does so many things. Huh? You and your contest. Well, can I help it if so many people can't stand me? Besides, what are you griping about? You got over 200 letter carriers helping you. I know, but it wasn't easy getting them. What? We have the only post office in the country with a draft board. <laughs> now, look. Well, don't you shout at me. See those four stars on my shoulder? Well, what does that mean? I'm a postmaster general, silly. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have asked him. Now, look, will you please stop with all this? Quiet. A message is coming in on my walkie-talkie. Flight commander to control tower. Flight commander to control tower. We're circling Beverly Hills. Please give instructions. Over. Control tower to flight commander. You're approaching the target. Drop down to 500 feet. Open the bomb bay. Wait a minute. What is this? Air mail, you old-fashioned poop. <laughs> General, do me a favor, will you? I drained all the water out of the swimming pool. Put the letters in there. The house is full. Very well. Thank you, General. Oh, now what? You forgot to salute. <laughs> now cut that out. This is all General Bradley's fault. I mean, it's all Steve Bradley's fault. <laughs> Having people write letters on why they can't stand them. These snowshoes are kind of tight. He longed for the bite of the Yukon night in the northern lights with liquor. Rochester. And a game was stud in a frozen mud and a taste of raw red liquor. Rochester, stop with that poetry. We're not in the Yukon. I don't know about you, but I'm chewing on some blubber. <laughs> what? Tough as a steak with Yukon oh. cake. Hard boiled as a picnic cake. Rochester. He washed his shirt in the Klondike dirt and drank his rum by the cake. <laughs> Rochester, just hand to the mail. We still have thousands of letters to read. Hey, Jackson, here's a letter. Listen to this one. I can't stand Jack Benny because he charges $2 an hour to play his violin at weddings. What? Signed, Tommy Manville. <laughs> well, that's how it is when you work for one man too long. You know? <laughs> now, let's not get these mixed up. Well, because... Mr. Benny. Oh, Larry, I didn't see you with all these letters around here. When did you come in? Yesterday. Oh. You better read your way to the window and get some air. I can't stand Jack Benny because he won't pay Rochester more money, because he won't give him a night off, and because he won't... Rochester, pay... stop reading those letters. I ain't reading, boss. <laughs> well, we talk about our little problems in private. Yeah, you, me, and the dyes committee. Never mind. Yeah, I'm getting tired reading these letters. I'm going to rest a while. Say, Larry, why don't you sing a song for us? I'd like to, Mr. Benny, but I've got laryngitis. Hey, everybody's got a cold. You and Mary, what a show we're going to have. Just my luck, Fred Allen will be as fit as a fiddle. <laughs> I'm sorry you can't sing today, kid. It wouldn't make any difference, Mr. Benny. I was going to sing I'm Glad I Waited for You, but Mr. Harris' band can't play it. Phil. Why can't your band play I'm Glad I Waited for You? No rushes. We got to take these songs in order. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. What are you working on now? The Sheik of Arabic. <laughs> what? It's a great song, Jackson. It goes like this. I'm the Sheik of Arabic. Da, 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 don't be uh, your love belongs to me. I don't uh, when you are... I know, I know. <laughs> I know how it goes. He wanted to 
shop, buy the side of beef, and the butcher says, shall I wrap it up or will you eat it here? <laughs> now, look, Don, I'm busy with my contest mail. What do you want? Well, the reason I called you, Jack, is because I'm going on a local broadcast today, and I, I want you to listen in. Oh, sure, sure. We'll all listen. I'm going to tell a few jokes, and I'd like to try one out on you. Jokes? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Don. Go ahead. Why are Lucky Strike cigarettes like Minneapolis? Say, that sounds like you got something there. Go ahead, Don. Why are Lucky Strikes uh, cigarettes like Minneapolis? Because they're so round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. (laughs) (laughs) What? Don't you get it, Jack? No. Well, now, wait. I'll make it easier for you. Lucky Strikes are like Minneapolis because they're made of the finer, the lighter, the naturally milder tobacco. (laughs) Don... Don, I might be a little dense today, but I, I still don't get it. Well, uh, now I'll explain it to you so you can't miss it. Oh. Lucky strikes are like Minneapolis because with men who know tobacco best, it's Lucky's two to one. But, Don, that doesn't make sense. Minneapolis doesn't fit in there. It doesn't? No. Oh, I guess you're right, Jack. I'll make it St. Paul. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I think you've really got something. Well, Don. I better run along. Goodbye. Oh, Don, just a second. Uh, what time do you go on that program? At 6.15. Okay, I'll listen. Goodbye. Oh, my goodness, I forgot to ask him what station. Oh, well, we'll find it. Hey, Phil, the house looks a little better with all those letters cleaned up. You know, as soon as we get through, I've got to go out and do some more Christmas shopping. Say, Jackson, i got a swell present for you this year. You have, Phil? Yeah. How much did it? I mean, what is it? <laughs> Uh, what uh, what did you get me? A case of gin. A case of gin? Well, it'll come in handy when you throw a party. When am I going to throw a party? The minute I bring it over, Bob. <laughs> All right, Phil. We'll have a party on New Year's Eve. Huh? M- Mr. Benny, what are you going to give me for Christmas? Well, what are you going to give me, Rochester? You tell me what you're going to give me. No, no. First you tell me what you're going to give me. No, you tell me. No, you tell me. <laughs> No, you tell me. No, you tell me. <laughs> what are you laughing at? We do this every year, and all we get out of it is a sore throat. <laughs> well, don't worry. I'm going to buy you a nice gift. Now, before I do my shopping, I better go over my list again. Let's see. For Christmas, I'll get some cough drops for Larry Stevens. Some new, new wax fruit for Mary. And something for Don Wilson. I hear they're stretching two ways again. <laughs> now, let's see. What else?
see. I ought to get some Christmas presents for my writers. They need pencil and paper. <laughs> and I must look around for some cheap bow ties for all the boys in Phil's band. Cheap bow ties? Why don't you get them some good ones? Phil, as long as the elastic snaps in them, they're happy. <laughs> Now, uh, now let's see. Uh, what uh, what else do I have to get? I'll get it, Rochester. Hello. Hello, is my daddy there? Your daddy? Oh, oh, is this Phil Harris's little girl? Yes, is this Mr. Benny? Stars H Green Radio will drive the children to school at twenty cents a trip. <laughs> How, how did you know all that? It was printed on a Christmas card you sent us. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Well, Mr. Benny, I hope you won't be mad at my daddy when you see the letter he sent into your contest. Oh, for heaven's sake. You mean your daddy showed you the letter? I had it right for him. <laughs> well, I should have known he couldn't do it himself. Sure, sweetheart. Just a minute. Phil, Phil, your little girl's on the phone. Jackson. Hello, baby. So hot shot. <laughs> what did you call me for, honey? Well, Daddy, I don't know what to buy you for Christmas. I wish you'd tell me what you want. Oh, darling, you don't have to buy me anything for Christmas. That's what you told me last year. And then you got even with me on my birthday. <laughs> no, no. Now, baby, Daddy didn't get even with you. He just forgot, that's all. Gee, Daddy, I like Christmas. Santa Claus and everything. Yeah, it's wonderful. And, baby, do you know where Santa Claus comes from? Uh-huh. And that's what I like about the North Pole. Oh, <laughs> oh isn't that cute? Hey, Jackson, you should have heard what my kid just said. Oh, Daddy, wasn't that funny? <laughs> yeah. Yes, it was, too. You know, honey, I never saw that. Okay, goodbye, darling. Goodbye, hot shot. Oh, gee, what a sweet kid. He sure is, Jackson. You know, it's wonderful being a father, especially when your kid is just starting to school. You know, I come home at night, sit her on my lap, and watch her do her homework. Yeah. You'd be surprised what you can learn that way. <laughs> Well, stick to it, Phil. You know, it isn't going to hurt you, Annie. You said it. I've learned plenty. Hey, Jackson, do you know what a period is? <laughs> Certainly, a period is what you put at the end of a sentence. And it's also a dot over a nine. <laughs> Phil, you positively amazed me. <laughs> now, let's get the rest of these letters out of the way. I say, Phil, take all these letters that you've been open here and put them in the corner. And I wish you'd try... Oh, boss. What is it, Rochester? Here's a letter from Fred Allen. Fred Allen? He can't be in the contest. He's a judge. Just the same. He sent this letter. What does it say? It says, I can't stand Jack Benny because... Uh-huh. Then he lists the reasons alphabetically, chronologically, and geographically. <laughs> geographically? Yeah, he can't stand you any place. <laughs> Oh, he just thinks he's smart because he can say such big words with his nose. <laughs> he's awful. Stop, Jackson, stop. You just don't like him because he's a great comedian. That has nothing to do with it. And listen, Phil, all week long you've been sarcastic just because I was the only one invited to Ronald Coleman's house last Sunday for dinner. I still don't believe he sent you an invitation. Well, you can go and look at it again. It's framed over the fireplace. <laughs> Not only that, I'm having the Coleman's over to my house next Sunday. You are? Yeah. I think I ought to invite their friend from England, Mr. Wellington. He was a guest at their house, too. Hey, Jackson, you promised Don Wilson you'd listen to his program. It's getting late. Oh, yeah. What time is it? I don't know. The little hand is straight down and the big hand is bent over. <laughs> At 6.15. Phil, why don't you learn how to tell time? I tried to, but it always keeps changing. <laughs> Oh, well, I better listen to Don. Rochester, turn on the radio. We want to hear Don Wilson. Uh, what station is it? He forgot to tell me. Try to get it anyway. 
her tub test. <laughs> Gee, I hope her agent made a good deal for her. And speaking of Jack Benny, his contest has brought thousands and thousands of letters from every state in the Union. Well, almost every state. Maine and Vermont are still holding out. <laughs> That shows what she knows. They hate me there, too. That's all for now. But don't forget that starting next week, my own program for Woodbury will be increased to 15 minutes. So be sure to listen in to all the latest news from Hollywood. This is Luella Parsons saying good night. I must call up Luella and tell hey, her... Hey, Jackson, what about the program that Don Wilson is on? Oh, yes, I must get that. Don't smile, my honey dear, my life is no way here, or else I will be melancholy. Yes, I will be melancholy. Know that I'll be melancholy, too. Oh, God, isn't... Isn't that... 
that awful? Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to the glorious voice of Miss Ginny Mudfender. You're looking at the Pine Street Bowling Alley. Well, what do you know? Don Wilson's been on that program all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, the contest will end at midnight December 24th, so be sure to get your letters in before then. Just complete this sentence. I can't stand Jack Benny because, in 50 words or less, and mail your letter to the Jack Benny Contest, Hollywood 28, California. The first prize will be a $2,500 in victory bonds. The second prize, $1,500 in victory bonds. The third prize, a $1,000 victory bond. And there will be 50 additional prizes of $100 victory bonds each. Remember, all you have to do is complete this sentence, I can't stand Jack Benny because... In 50 words or less, and mail it to the Jack Benny Contest, Hollywood 28, California. That's the Jack Benny Contest, Hollywood 28, California. Our board of judges will include Goodman Ace of the Easy Aces and Peter Laurie. He frightens me. And the supreme and final judge will be the Honorable Fred Allen. He frightens Peter Laurie. <laughs> the decision of the judges will be final, and all letters become the property of Jack Benny, including the rights to publish. This contest is open to everyone except the employees of the American Tobacco Company, its agents, and the National Broadcasting Company. It is also subject to all federal and state laws and regulations. In case of a tie, duplicate prizes will be awarded. Ladies and gentlemen, Christmas shopping this season is just as difficult as it was last year and the year before. However, there's an answer to the question. What will I give for Christmas? Why not give victory bonds and stamps? They are tangible evidence of our gratitude... Yes, responsibility to those who have made possible our nation's first peacetime Christmas. Give the present with a future. Victory bonds and stamps for Christmas. Jack will be back in just a minute. First, here is my good friend, Effie Boone. Independent tobacco experts spend their lives buying, selling, and handling tobacco. Mr. Joseph Edgar Joyce, independent tobacco buyer of Pinnacle, North Carolina, said, As a tobacco man, I know a good leaf of tobacco when I see it. Over a period of many years, I have seen that Lucky Strike buys the finer, lighter tobacco. When Lucky Strike buys a basket of tobacco, it's got to be good all the way down. I've smoked Lucky's for 18 years. Quote, when Lucky Strike buys a basket of tobacco, it's got to be good all the way down. Unquote. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's program are Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At 49, I'm And Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. That's where I Dale speaking for Lucky Strike. L.S.M.F.T. L.S.M.F.T. L-S-M-F-T. So for your own real deep down smoking enjoyment, smoke that smoke of fine tobacco Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Well, thank heaven that cleans up all these letters until the mailmen get here tomorrow. Say, Phil. Yeah, Jackson. I'd like you and all the gang to come over to dinner next Sunday night. You know, I'm having the Ronald Coleman. Oh, gee, thanks, Jackson. I'll be there. And remember, Phil, when we're having dinner, watch your P's and Q's. You know what I mean. Oh, sure. When you give me the Q, I'll pass the P's. <laughs> oh, filthy. What a shame you haven't got laryngitis, too. You dumb. <laughs> you said I'll bet Mary's glad she didn't have to hear that joke. Good night, doll. <laughs> This is the National Broadcasting Company.